Hi gentlemen, this is the last of four videos analysing Miriam Weiwei Lo's poem Home and this one focuses on section three of the poem and in this slide we have a picture of a blue plumbago mentioned in the last stanza. Here she's describing home as a place to return to bed, toilet, kitchen, exposed brick walls, worn grey carpet. She's talking about all these physical attributes of a home. Again though, the physical environment feels quite unimportant. Here we have colour imagery of the worn grey carpet, which is showing a lived in place. Home is somewhere where people live. Toys all over the floor reminding me that I've left the life of the mind for this. So previously in the poem, she's been in this life of the mind. She's been reflecting, she's been thinking, and now she's back to reality. The direct speech of her children, home, we're going home, captures the children's excitement. And this is really heavily contrasted with her detachment. They must mean this place. She still doesn't feel at home. Now she looks back on the past and thinks about what home was to her father. He was born into a single room that housed his whole family. And she's contrasting this with how she is living now. And this running water, six sets of taps, a fridge, a washing machine, enough books for a dowager empress or a medieval king. There's this contrast between east and west again about um, poverty and prosperity. There's this listing of material items that shows what westerners need in order to feel home. There's also these hyperboles showing the number of books, the dowager empress and the medieval king. These emphasise the excesses of material items that Westerners have and take for granted. These items that we need to feel at home. If there must be a place, a tent for the body on this earth, I'll take this one. With the blue plumbago waving defiantly through the natives, the climbing white jasmine rampant over the fence and the mulberry tree, that foreigner so completely at home growing taller each year. We have this botanical imagery throughout this stanza. These foreign plants um, representing that a foreigner can live and flourish in a foreign land, as the poet can herself. This blue plumbago, it's native to South Africa and it's very common in Australia. It makes itself at home in just about any environment. Something that the persona, that the low is finding it really difficult to do, to make herself at home. We have the white jasmine, which grows throughout Asia and is popular and used in tea in China. It grows rampant in Australia and is considered to be an invasive weed as it grows so quickly and can actually cause damage. So um, this, this is, uh, this the botanical imagery here is this um, great success story. If, if you're the, the white jasmine, it's just able to, to just grow and flourish. And this mulberry tree, which comes from all over the world. So there's some species from America, others from Asia. Many of them have naturalized in Europe. It's so completely at home and it's strong. It's growing taller each year. So perhaps this is a metaphor for the poet. Maybe she feels like she's becoming stronger in her home in Australia. So this last section of the poem is about, um, is, is about the reality for the poet, is about how she lives in Australia now and she's looking back on her heritage as to how her father grew up and she's, she's thinking about um, what, it, what, what home is to her now. But there's still this discomfort coming through in parts of section three where she's still showing that she doesn't feel at home. The poet is conflicted still about what home is and um, and still feels a bit out of place. Though uh, this last stanza shows a bit of hope. 
the, the success of these foreigners uh, through this botanical imagery, the success that they have had in Australia in growing strong and growing tall and growing out everywhere. So the, the poem ends on this um, sort of lighter note that maybe it is possible to feel home when you have all of these contrasting things going on, the, the heritage and, um, and, and feeling like you don't belong in a foreign place.